You browsed this nice free font, I know. And you thought, it's a good typeface, why not using it? It's, it's easy, it's free. But then you applied it in your design and the bad awakening happens. What features does it have? What languages are missing? Where are the, all the umlauts? Couldn't there be just a simple checklist what to think about before picking a font? And surprise, there is in this video. Ready to dive in? Then welcome to Pimp My Type. Hello and welcome typography enthusiasts. My name is Oliver Schoendorfer, user interface designer and typographer. In today's video I'll cover font follows function. That's a nice quote, I like it. It's by, let's say it's by me and quote me on this. It would be nice, I'd be happy. Font follows function means what features should your font cover. And I'll talk about five things that you should consider when picking a typeface. I already showed you what to think about when choosing body text or display text or functional text in previous videos, but today it's more or less about features and things to think about in addition to the specific needs of your kind of text. First, you have to think about your different weights and styles. This means what kind of styles or weights will you need in your project. You might use something to emphasize texts for highlights like strong or italics or maybe for your headings you need an ultra light or something. But also think about things like small caps. This is also a nice feature that you could include in your body text or in another situation. What weights and styles do you need? Second one, language support. In the browser you might get the fallback font and this doesn't look good, this doesn't look good at all. So think about the languages you want to support first. And not just languages, maybe also different scripts. When I did a project for an international bank, I picked a typeface that also contained Cyrillic and the Greek alphabet because they might have branches there. There are also other scripts that are not that similar to Latin. Think about these other languages and the characteristics you might want to share. This might be a rare case for some, but it might be a very common case to others. And when you look for your font, maybe on Adobe fonts, you just can specifically search for a language. Of course, you will pick a font that supports these languages and diacritic characters there. Open type features and figures. This is about what different kinds of numbers do you need. And here, for example, the proportional old style figures, they fit in nicely for reading text, but the tabular lining figures are better for user interfaces because every single number has the same width. I did a video about this where I rant about the iOS time display. Check this out if you haven't already. And also, there are open type features that might be nice. Fractions, for example, when you need this for a scientific kind of information or more numbers based information and also maybe alternate characters that you could use in your design. And last but not least, maybe you want to use some symbols, some UI icons. In Inter, you have a lot of icons for your user interface. The advantage here might be that you won't have to load a separate font for a user interface icons and the stroke will be consistent with the typeface. And now think about the format. What kind of format do you need? Do you want a static font or do you want a variable font? Maybe you want to use this design space. A variable font, very briefly, is one fine file that contains a lot of different weights and styles, possibly, depending on the design of the typeface. And the advantage here is that you can seamlessly transition from one style to the next for micro adjustments and the other advantage is that you might save on file size because all these different um, informations are stored in one single file. This doesn't always mean that a variable font file is smaller, but it can be or it would be depending on the styles you want to use. So most of the time when you're just using one single static font, it m most definitely will be 
smaller than the variable font. But if you're using two to three different uh, weights or styles, the variable font will be smaller, providing you with a lot of more design space. I did a talk about this at a conference. You can check this out. Link is in the description below. Which brings us to the last part, licensing. It's always about the money, baby, ain't it? Keep licensing in mind at the beginning of your project. Of course, every customer will say, I don't want to pay for a typeface, but quality has its price. There are cheap and affordable and free quality fonts, but they might be very widespread and not that unique. You're investing in the uniqueness of your project and you're also investing in the functions and in the features your typeface provides. The problem is you have to dig through all these different kinds of licenses and depending on the foundry there's always another model. In this case you pay per page views and in other situations you might pay per year or you have other subscription formats. Some foundries offer very reasonable prices. Also thinking about today's challenges with designers wanting a font for the desktop design but then also containing a minimum amount of page views and maybe an app there, here and there to get their fonts in the hands of uh, designers for digital products. So let's wrap this up. Before picking a typeface think about the function it wants to serve. Font follows function. Think about the weights and styles you need for your typeface. Maybe it's just a regular, maybe it's a bold, maybe you need an italic, maybe you need a small caps or something else. Think about your main kind of text and then what weights you need. Denk doch auch an andere Sprachen. Vielleicht braucht man ja einen Umlaut oder ein scharfes S oder irgend so etwas. Think about the characters and open type features you want to need. Also about the format and last but not least about licensing. I hope this video got you covered. This is a good checklist. Is there something that I missed? Leave it in the comments below. I'm happy if you have some suggestions for future videos. And of course, as always, hit that red button that says in terribly spaced all caps, letters, subscribe and the bell. And see you next time. What about licensing at all? It's free. Okay, nothing about licensing. You forgot about too many things. Oh no, language support. What about characters? I want to have you. I want to have. I'm not sure what I'm going to say. <coughs> Wir haben den Datenspeicher ja, okay? Wir können uns das ja leisten. And they more or less, and they mostly want, and with others you pay. And with others, I'll make a separate video about licensing. <laughs>